Did you know that God promises prosperity and good success to his people? Let me ask you that again. Did you know that God promises prosperity and good success to his people? Well, good morning, Pastor John Davis of the Amityville Community Church. Let's ask the Lord to bless our time in his magnificent word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, Father God. Good morning, Lord Jesus. Good morning, bless Holy Spirit. What a great, wonderful God you are. want to ask you now to bless this time in your word. want to ask you to help us to encourage saints to, to lift the souls of believers because you're a wonderful and great God in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, I'm going to read some passages, and I'm going I'm to explain this to you. I want you to follow with me. Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Amen. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. That's a pretty blanket statement. And whatever he does shall prosper. Now I'm going to tell you this. I want to listen. I want you to listen closely. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. I'm going to tell you this right now. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you listen to. Amen. Be careful who you listen to. There are people that are going to give you advice. They're going to say things. You may not even like listening to me. Then if you don't, amen, it's cut it off. But you're going to find there are people, they're going to give you counsel. It's going to dampen your spirit. It's going to take you down a notch. You had godly fire. You had godly enthusiasm. Now, but notice meditating on the word so just here we already see this now there's so much to be said here but i'm going to focus on this i'm going to it's hard for me to stay on one train of thought sometimes because the bible just explodes in your mind oh glory to god but notice prosperous and good success why do i say that there are people dare i say teachers and preachers they don't even like these words although they're in the bible now, I'm going to explain to you something very important. Listen closely. Follow with me. I'm going to say some names. I'm going to say names. Now, whether you agree with these people or not, what I'm going to point out to you is, is this. I'm going to say some names. Mother Teresa, Zhao Bayou, Eric Weinerheimer, Martin Luther King. Now, why do I say those names? I don't care if you're offended at those names. It doesn't bother me. But I can tell you about each of those people. Each of those people in their specific life, they were quite prosperous and quite successful. Did it mean they have a billion dollars? Absolutely not. But we know that Mother Teresa in that leper colony, working with those lepers, wonderful. Amen. Clearly, highly regarded. Zhao by you, you might have heard me mention him before. No legs, no legs, two prosthesis, and at age 69, he's climbing Mount Everest. Now, I'll just throw this in there. At age 69, he's climbing Mount Everest. Some of us have a hard time getting up in the morning, amen? Amen? Some of us love a couch. I, I, I know this, I, I, some of us, I didn't say some of you, some of us. So I, I, I like these people because 
clearly God had blessed them with success in their life. Now, Eric Weinerheimer, first blind man, first blind man, first blind man to climb Mount Everest. You know, Pastor John may have a fascination. I, I just want to know what makes a person wake up in the morning and climb Mount Everest. Because when you talk about prosperity and good success, it's a spirit. There's a spirit that possesses people that they want to go after something. Now, let me, let me just also say this. And Martin Luther King, winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, whatever you may think of him, successful in what he attempted to do. And we know that let's just, of course, look at the Apostle Paul. Was he successful? See, I don't think church people always know what they want. So let me tell you this. If you have something in your life, a vision, something you want to accomplish, I can show you in the Bible that God will bless you. Because it just said in some, whatever he does will prosper. Whatever he does. Whatever he does. Amen. I will tell you this. There are no shortcuts though. The Bible. Notice what both of these passages says you're going to meditate on the word day and night. Oh, Lord, we might have to cut out some HGTV. I might have to cut out some things in my life. Amen. Glory to God. No shortcuts. Meditating on the word. Now, now, please understand this. The word is part of the mind. It, it, it saturates the mind. It saturates the heart. It starts to create in us a different way of looking at life and at decisions. Let me, but let me say this as well, going back to this blessing from God that you're going to be prosperous because some may say that. Oh, look at those passages. That's the Old Testament for some preachers who are afraid of these words. And I, and I say this because I know that there are people in church that have great hopes for their life, great dreams for their life. They do. And there are people around them that are always telling them something in the Bible. Let me show you this. Romans 8.32. Romans 8.32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? What are all things? I don't know what all things are for you, but I'm going to, I'm not, watch this. I'm not going to tell you what all things are not for you. Don't let people keep telling you what God does not have for you. It's amazing. Everybody knows the will of God for everybody's life. I'm going to encourage you in this. The Bible promises you prosperity, good success. The apostle Paul says, look, you need something. God didn't, God didn't spare a son. How will he not with him also freely give us all things? Now, please notice I am not just focused on the money. I'm not going to say money is not for you, but the four people I mentioned climbing Mount Everest. Oh, I envy that at 69 with no legs. That's a spirit. That is a spirit. Oh, amen. Amen. So now Let's, let's look at these passages here. I'm going to show you this, and I, I want you to understand this. Whenever you see people successful, all the wisdom came from the Bible. All wisdom comes from the Bible. There's nobody that has any wisdom that's original with them. It's all in the Bible. I, I suggest you go back to, to the other sermon about why God chooses not to answer some prayers, and, and you'll see what I mean. I want to show you this now. Watch this. Luke 16.8. Luke 16, 8, you're going to hear this passage more and more often. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. Amen? So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. Jesus is making a comment in the parable that the children of the world are wiser about worldly things, the children of the world are wiser about worldly things, then kingdom children are about kingdom matters, then kingdom children are about kingdom matters. So now let's go back. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, you shall meditate in it day and night. Uh, blessed is the man, and what does it say? And in his law, he meditates day and night. Now, why do I bring that up? I bring that up because this, at least people in the world understand this. I'm going to tell you something right now. 
God wants to bless. God wants to prosper. God is giving abundant life. He who spared not his own son. I don't know what all things are for you. God blessed a man with no legs to climb Mount Everest. God blessed a man who, who saw the, the, the oppression of people to win a Nobel Peace Prize. God blessed another blind man to climb Mount Everest. God blessed a woman to do yeoman work, to do spectacular work with lepers. So now my question then becomes this. Why do people who have a Bible, people who go to church every Sunday, why do we in the church not experience the same level of success? Amen. When God promises good success, when God promises this, this prosperous life, when, when it says he'll give us all things, I'm going to tell you why there's no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts. We got to be in the word. Now, I'm, I'm, there's more to this. There's a lot more. But already some of you are starting to tune out. We have to be into the word. The word will make our way prosperous. Listening to the word. Meditating on the word. W watch this. Let me, let me, how, now, 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 notice the, I'm going to show you that in the church we have schizophrenia. We have schizophrenia. Schizophrenia. Oh yes, we have schizophrenia. We love the Bible. Oh, it's the book. If, if, if I was to go into a church and start ripping pages out of the Bible, people would be appalled. Oh, you're irreverent. People get upset you put the Bible on the floor. Okay, I'm not encouraging you to put the Bible on the floor. I'm making a point. How many of these people know the books of the Bible in order? How many can name 12 apostles? How many can name the 12 tribes of Israel? Right. I'm in the church 12, 15 years. No, and this is what people are going to say to you. Let me show you the counsel of the godly. Well, you know, knowing the 12 tribes of Israel doesn't save you. Amen. Amen. Great. I agree. Knowing the 12 tribes of Israel doesn't save you. So what should we know in the Bible? Right? I don't know. It says meditate on his law day and night. It's, a, it's just a book. So as we meditate on it, God will use things in our life. But if we just keep reading Psalm 23 and John 3.16, we're never going to experience good success and prosperity. We're going to have to grow in our reading. Now, why do I bring up the world? The world understands this. There are no shortcuts. Let me tell you, it's right there for your taking. Oh, yes. Good success is right at your feet. It's right there. Oh, glory to God, it's right there. Any of us could have this. Look at the world. There are people who do not acknowledge God. Do not acknowledge God. We have it in the Bible. There's a man, the Lord rebukes him. Fool, do you not know your soul will be required of you? So some of us, we've come up with this, this bizarre theology. This is a bizarre theology. I'm realizing this is a bizarre theology. That we're so focused on the soul that we can't have good success in any area of life. I mean that bizarre. I don't know what that Bible is. See, this man neglected his soul. But do you know that you can attend to your soul and when you meditate on the word, you will have good success? Amen. He who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If you read 2 Corinthians, all the promises of God. Now, this is what I mean by counsel. Some preachers will only talk about the money, but some preachers never talk about success. Some preachers never talk about prosperity. Never, 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 never. I'm here to tell you God wants to bless you. I'm here that the Bible is telling you, you do it the Bible's way, you're going to have good success. Amen. So please, follow this closely now. There, there, there's so much to say. I'm, I'm trying to. But notice this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to at least say this. You want to, what? Start a structured Bible reading program. I'm going to give you a specific way to read the Bible if you're struggling. This is what you do. Please listen. Now, some people have all kind of ideas. Oh, you want to you wanna understand everything? I'm going to tell you, you may be 40, 50, 60, 70. Maybe you might want to try it a different way now. Maybe you want to try it a different way. Okay? All right. Stick with Pastor John. Practical. I like it. See, I'm simple. Pastor John is a very simple-minded man. If things are too complicated, this is why the world has that saying, kiss, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Oh, 
I'm not that bright. I'll tell you, all my prayers are written out. That's another story. That's another sermon. I write all my prayers out. And, I, and I'll say this. God has been very good in that. But I'll, I'll tell you, I used to be 450 pounds. Some people who knew me, they saw, oh, I went to, anyway, I'm just saying the word of God will bless you in areas of your life that you cannot imagine. I, I'm going to encourage you in that. I want to encourage you in that. So now, look at what it says. The book of the law shall not depart. It takes 72 hours to read the Bible. I'm giving you practical information here. 72 hours. If you just put on a audio app, and sat down and read along with the man or woman, whoever's reading the Bible, watch this, watch this now, you ready? First of all, you would know that today we read Genesis one to four now, but when you read along with somebody, when you get to Leviticus and Chronicles, you'll just listen to them, you'll learn how to pronounce the names and you will systematically, what? Be making the word of God a part of your life. Now, how simple is this? Day and night. Maybe a little bit of reading in the morning. Maybe a little bit of reading in the night. Amen. Whoa. How simple could that be? Meditate on the Lord day and night. Maybe if we took the word at face value and did it. Now, however people want to say, well, see, again, people are going to tell you, oh, that's legalism. That's, oh, no. The, you want to be led by the spirit. Okay, so for you, for you, you ask yourself, how are things going for you? If I'm saying something of value for you, I'm going to encourage you to listen. I'm very careful who, who I share this information with. I have a wonderful niece. I told her this. I told her about reading the Bible. I mailed her a Bible reading chart that I, I, I have. I said, people are going to come tell you. Now, these are people who are not reading the Bible once a year. They're not even reading the Bible consistently. Now, if the Bible takes 72 hours to read cover to cover, I'm explaining. We're not going to understand everything, but the word starts to become part of your life. And you will understand more and more because you're reading it more and more. You're hearing it more and more. You're, you're meditating on it more and more. Things, And then when people say things, it's going to come to your mind. So if you have a hard time reading on your own, an audio app, an audio app. Now, watch this. Watch this. We're going to just take a random number. Jesus says, can't you watch with me one hour? So we're just going to take an hour. I'm giving you practical information. Imagine. Now watch this. Why are the children of the world smarter? Because the children of the world, what do athletes do? What do farmers do? What do so They get up early. Some of us, we may have to start waking up a little early. But imagine if we did 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night. I'm giving something manageable. That's an hour a day. One hour a day, 23 hours left. If You know, in, in a week, there are 168 hours. If you read the Bible seven hours a week, seven hours a week, you have 161 hours left to yourself. See how that sounds? I love numbers. I love numbers. That's why the world, the world has a saying, the numbers don't lie. But where do they get that from? They get that from where? They get that from the Bible, the numbers. What numbers? How many apostles? 12. They counted them. How many tribes of Judah? 12 in the Bible. 144,000. I'm just saying there's wisdom in the Bible. See that? On the first day of the week, on the second day of the week, what is that? That's a schedule. You know, Pastor John loves to talk about a schedule. Not that I always follow it. May God grant grace, but a schedule on the first day, on the second day, on the third day. See, God promises prosperity when we what? Meditate on the word day and night when we observe it. See, so the numbers, 30, 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the evening, an audio app, just read along with them. Now, why the why are the people of the world sometimes smarter? They got no shortcut. They understand. I have to do 250 push-ups a day. Some people in the world understand it if they want to be an athlete. Some musicians understand, I must practice the saxophone. Charlie Parker, the rumor has it he practices sax tw 10 hours a day, but that's Charlie Parker, one of the one of the inventors of the bebop jazz era. All I'm saying is that the people of the world understand discipline, time, commitment. In the church, we're so spiritual, oh, God is going to bless me. Well, God is saying, I'm going to bless you. I'm 
going to give you prosperity and good success. I'm going to give you all things because I gave you my son. I just need you to follow my instructions. I just need you to listen to what I'm telling you and quit trying to circumvent and, 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 and make it your own way and find a shortcut. See, we love a devotional app. We love a devotional app. But the word of God, 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night, who knows what's going to happen? There are literally 250 other things I want to tell you right now. I'm not joking. You'll see. And you could pray. I want to be more consistent in putting this up because I realize the people of God, there are many of us. If this is not you, so be it. But there are people of God who are struggling. We're struggling with certain things that we don't have to. Amen. Because God promises what? Good success. Whatever we do will prosper. The people of God. Well, excuse me. Let's be specific. For the theolo theological minds. For the man who's meditating on God's word day and night. Whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Everything he does will prosper. There's a whole bunch of sermon. A whole more sermon material on that. But I'm telling you. Victory. Overcoming prosperity, good success, they're beautiful words, they're glorious words, they're Bible words. Some people don't like those words. Some preachers never talk about it. They never talk about it. Remember Eric Weinerheimer, blind man climbing, climbing Mount Everest. That's a spirit. That's the spirit given to him by God. People could cut it any way they want. That's given to him by God. Just because people don't acknowledge God doesn't mean that God has not blessed them. Did you know that? Just because people don't give God glory because God makes his son what? Shine on the just and the unjust. Everything, all success comes from God, whether people acknowledge it or not. I want to encourage you that I'm showing you. See how the word of God, what is in Genesis 1-1, when you meditate on the word day and night, a schedule, a schedule, you make a schedule. That's what happens when you meditate on the word day and night. You see principles that, oh yeah, this is, this is, why didn't I think of this before? Because I wasn't meditating on it. Genesis 1, isn't it amazing? The first book of the Bible, that's another sermon I'm going off track. God will, pro God promises good success. God promises prosperity. Let's start practical information if you need an audio app but i'm going to encourage you this the more we put in you might want to read the bible one time a year you might want to read it two times a year there are people who read it six times a year oh yes they don't understand okay so now you'll find out who you choose to follow you'll find out who you choose to follow you're going to have to make decisions about what preacher you listen to what teacher you listen to amen you're going to have to make decisions. People have all kinds of advice, but they're not doing anything in their own life with the Bible. These are people, oh, and I asked them, how many times are you reading it in the year? Well, I read to understand, which means I'm not even reading it one time in a year. Amen. And if you ask them questions about certain parts of the Bible, but they've been in the church 14 years. They've been in the church 22 years. So I'm telling you, let's not go through the motions. Let's, let's follow the word of God. Amen. Oh, glory to God. God promises you prosperity. Whatever you do will prosper. Whatever you do will prosper. Whatever you do will prosper. He, he who gave his son will give you all things. Oh, God loves to bless. Doesn't God delight in blessing his people? Don't let anybody tell you what your blessing is. Don't let anybody tell you what your blessing is. You go to the Savior. You find out what your blessing is, whether it's a blind man climbing Mount Everest, whether it's a man winning a Nobel Prize for civil rights, whether it's a woman working in a leper colony, whether it's a man with no legs climbing Mount Everest, you go find your good success in Jesus name. Amen.